In this lecture, we will uh, go deeper into the structure of chain maps by building a sort of homotopy theory for them. Let's see what sorts of structures we are interested in extracting for chain maps. So a chain map, let's call it phi, uh, that goes from a chain complex CD to a chain complex C prime D prime uh, is called a quasi-isomorphism. If the induced maps on homology I guess we call them H, K, phi. They go from the homology of C to the homology of D, uh, sorry, C prime. Uh, these are all isomorphisms. So in every dimension K, that linear map connecting the Kth homology of C to the Kth homology of C prime is an isomorphism. And uh, the point is that phi can be a quasi iso, even if, remember, phi itself is a collection of maps going from chain groups to chain groups. So if these maps are not isomorphisms. So a quasi isomorphism is a much more relaxed notion of an isomorphism of chain complexes, which would require rigidly that the dimension of CK be the dimension of CK prime and that the map uh, phi k be an invertible map, uh, linear map between these two chain groups. This is not what we're asking for here. We're asking for the induced maps on homology to be um, isomorphisms, and that's a very different uh, sort of beast to deal with. So we need uh, tools. We need better tools than you know isomorphism recognition. Now, we said in the last lecture that these induced maps, you can actually build matrices and, and see, um, uh, you know, get basis elements for uh, the K homology group of both sides and actually build a matrix. So in theory, or at least in computation, this problem is nicely solved um, by, by linear algebra. Even so, it's going to be extremely useful and powerful to have tools uh, that you can use on an abstract level without having to do a lot of computation. So that's what uh, we're going to build here today. Okay, so let's see. Um, here is the idea of a homotopy between two such chain maps, and this is going to play an enormous role in the rest of this lecture and I would say the rest of the course. Um, so given chain maps uh, phi and psi from this going between the same pair of chain complexes as so C, to C prime, um, a chain homotopy, which we'll call eta and denote it as uh, with this double arrow from phi to psi, is a collection of linear maps and this is where we have to be careful with indexing. Um, so the kth, sorry, uh, the kth map in this chain homotopy is going to go from the kth chain group of C, that makes sense, but now it's going to go into the k plus first uh, chain group of C prime. So it's shifting the degree by plus one, or shifting the dimension by plus one, if you will, um, so, which satisfy uh, the following uh, strange looking relation. Uh, phi k minus psi k is the same as uh, d prime k plus 1 composed with eta k plus eta k minus 1 composed with d k. I make absolutely um, no promises that the uh, subscripts on the right side of this equation are correct. I think they are, but basically uh, you can check this by seeing that uh, everything goes um, uh, from k chains to k chains once you've done the composition. 
so the boundary operator, every time you see it, lowers dimension by one, but then the, the eta brings it back up. So, so this is what, uh, uh, this is the definition of uh, a chain homotopy. And now I, uh, there are no other constraints on these maps eta. They're just arbitrary linear maps that satisfy this difference of phi minus psi equals d eta plus eta d, this, this equation. Um, so they don't commute with anything, but it's good to see where they have to fit into the commuting diagrams that describe phi and psi. So, um, so let's, let's see what those look like. Um, so you have the chain groups. Here's dk plus 1 going to ck. Here's dk going to ck minus 1, uh, and so on. So that's one chain complex. And then you have the primed version d prime k plus 1, ck prime, dk prime. OK, so these two chain complexes are running along. And now both the maps phi and psi are going uh, in the same direction. They're going from the, the C groups to the C prime groups. Okay, and now the, the, the maps that we're describing, the eta maps, are, are shown in red here. They're always going up uh, from CK to CK prime plus one, CK minus one to CK prime, and so on. And again, it looks like they're forming these nice triangles uh, that uh, that might commute, but they do not. They absolutely do not have to commute. They're just linear maps that satisfy um, this box relation. Okay, um, good. So, what's uh, what's the point? The point is that this is playing the role that homotopy uh, the, played in the, the land of uh, continuous functions between topological spaces. Instead of a map from, you know, C cross zero one or something, you're mapping now the, the cross zero one, the, the crossing with a unit interval is all hidden in the uh, indexing uh, of this uh, C prime K plus one guy. Anyway, um, just a few bits of um, uh, warnings about this uh, is that uh, it's not easy to find these uh, even when they exist. But anyhow, uh, okay, so here's the proposition. If phi and psi are chain homotopic, then they induce the same maps on homology, which is to say that HK phi is going to completely coincide with HK psi um, for all dimensions k bigger than zero. And this is as linear maps going between the kth homology of CD uh, and the kth homology of C prime D prime. Um, and to prove this, we want to show that any time uh, you have something that represents homology, so it's a, uh, something in the kernel of dk, the difference uh, between phi k gamma and psi k of gamma is a boundary, i.e. it lies in the image of uh, dk plus 1 prime. But this is exactly what that uh, red boxed equation near the top of the slides um, is going to do for us. Because if you have um, phi k gamma minus psi k gamma, that equation tells us that this is exactly the same as d prime k plus 1 of eta k of gamma. I have no idea what that is supposed to look like because I don't know anything about the map eta k except for the fact that it exists and it satisfies this equation. So that term is not use, useful to me. Uh, plus eta k minus 1 dk of gamma. And now we see something useful. Gamma is in the kernel of dk, so this term is 0, and therefore the second sum and eta k minus 1, it's a linear map, so that whole thing has to be 0. And so all that's left is something 
uh, in the image of dk plus one primed. So the difference between these two cycles, the images of, uh, sorry, the difference between uh, where phi takes the cycle and where psi takes the cycle is a boundary. And homology has no way of detecting boundaries because that's exactly what gets quotiented out. So um, that's it. If you have two chain homotopic maps, then they induce the same maps and homology. And this is what you use in order to get a criterion for when two simplicial complexes have the same homology. So this is playing the role of homotopy. Uh, equivalence between functions, and now uh, we're going to ask when um, when two maps induce homotopy equivalence. Okay, so here's a definition: um, two chain complexes C D and C prime D prime are called chain homotopy equivalent, and you're encouraged to go back to week two. Uh, to see versions of all these results without the chains. Uh, so uh, our chain homotopy equivalent, if um, there exists a pair of chain maps going back and forth, so phi will go from C to C prime, and psi is going to go from C prime back to C, and chain homotopies. Now we need two of them. The first one, which we'll call eta, is going to go from the identity chain map on CD to um, one of the composites. Uh, maybe that one. That sounds right. And the other one is going to go from the other composite to the identity chain map on C prime. Okay. Um, and thanks to the proposition above, um, if uh, so, so thanks to the proposition above, chain homotopy equivalence implies isomorphic homology. So. If these, if we have two chain complexes that are chain homotopy equivalent, they have isomorphic homologies. And in fact, these maps phi and psi that you find en route to showing that things are chain homotopy equivalent um, are going to realize that, um, that they're going to be quasi-isomorphisms. Um, okay, so let's see how this can actually be made useful. So as an example, we could prove um, that the cone over any simplicial complex um, is um, has the same homology as uh, the solid zero simplex. So this has got the homology of a point. Um, and if you've forgotten what that is, it looks like HK of this is going to be the copy of the field if uh, k equals 0 and 0 otherwise. And if you've also forgotten what a cone looks like, uh, you add an extra vertex v star, um, take your simplicial complex k, and then literally um, pull every simplex up to v star. And this whole union is the cone on k. And so the claim is that all of these have the same homology uh, as a single point uh, delta zero. And if you remember uh, at the beginning of week three, if you don't have to remember this, but if you do, it helps. Uh, we said that homology was a homotopy invariant. And we also know that all cones are contractible. So this result should not be surprising. I just want to show you the algebraic version of it, um, or at least part of the algebraic version of it. So note that there are maps Simplicial maps uh, the first one I'll call f and it's going to take us from this uh, vertex delta zero to the cone on k uh, we only have one point one vertex here and we're going to send that to the special point v star and 
there's going to be another simplicial map G that goes in the other direction. And this time there's no choice. All the vertices in cone K have only one place to go, which is the, the vertex that you'd call zero in, in delta zero. Okay, so now the claim is that these two simplicial maps, um, their, their chain maps that they generate are going to be chain homotopy equivalent. Um, uh, oh, sorry, they're going to be, uh, they're going to give you two halves of a chain homotopy equivalence. Okay, so on the one hand, there's an easy computation. If you do F and then you do G, this is just the identity simplicial map on delta zero. Um, and it's easy to see that uh, this is going to be the identity chain map. So what we wanted to find was a chain homotopy relating the identity chain map to this composite. And what we have is even better. The two things are equal. So eta equals zero works. Uh, that could be your chain homotopy. Uh, things are a little bit more complicated for uh, F compose G. This is the map uh, on cone K, from cone K to cone K, sending every vertex to V star. And the claim, which is one of the exercises uh, for this particular uh, bit of material, is that there exists a chain homotopy Uh, relating this composite to the identity on cone K. And it's not so bad. One of the uh, exercises in the notes, the homotopy is explicitly written out, and so you just have to check that it works. But anyway, that was uh, everything about chain homotopy. Next up, we are going to see uh, sequences of chain complexes related by chain maps.